In this video, we'll show you how to install an aftermarket HD9813 RG Stage 3 on a 2013 Road Glide. Hey everyone, I'm Eric, and we'll get started by removing the battery terminals. You never want to work on any electronics with the battery connected. Start by using a number two Phillips to remove the seat and a T40 Torx to move the ECU cradle out of the way. Once you have access, use a 10 millimeter socket or Phillips screwdriver to disconnect the battery terminals. Now we're ready to remove the fairing. First, we'll install the service cover on the fender. Then we'll use a half inch ratchet to remove four bolts for the marker lights. Then carefully remove the lamp assembly from the fairing. Then using a T27 Torx, we'll remove the six Torx bolts that hold the fairing in place. Now it's best to have two people for this step. One to hold the fairing in position and the other to remove the screws. Once we pull up on the fairing, we'll disconnect the headlight harnesses and remove it from the bike. Now that we have that done, we're ready to remove the gas tank. We'll start off by disconnecting the main gas line. Push up on the hose and slide the collar upward, then pull down on the gas line. Next, disconnect the two breather lines in the back and detach any harnesses. Note that these may be zip-tied underneath. Now once that's done, use a half-inch socket to remove the two bolts in the back of the gas tank, then move to the front and detach the plastic covers and remove the other two bolts. On our motorcycle, we used a long-reach extension to clear the lowers. Now once you remove the gas tank, you can finish by using a plastic pry tool to remove the center trough cover. Now we're ready to remove both fairing speakers. We'll start by disconnecting the speaker wires, noting white is positive and black is negative. Then use a 7 16th socket to carefully loosen the bolt that captures the speaker housing. Finally, use a T25 Torx to remove the existing screws and speaker assembly. All right, now we're ready to install our new speakers. Be sure to use the hardware that's included with your new TMS speakers. Position the speaker with the grill logo facing down and slide it into the mounting standoffs on the fairing. Secure the three mounting screws in place using a number two Phillips. Reattach the factory harness to the speaker terminals, then tighten the capture bolt to finish securing it to the fairing. If the factory wiring harness is too short on your motorcycle, you can remove the four bolts that hold the speaker to the bezel with a number two Phillips and rotate it. Once you're done, repeat the process on the other side. All right, now we're ready to install our power harness. Take the power connector side of our harness and run it up the clutch side to the amplifier location that will be mounted on the left side of the inner fairing. Verify there's enough slack to make your battery connections. Now for our bag lid harness. We'll route the connector labeled speaker rear up the brake side to the amplifier location. We'll finish by routing the harness on the right side of the channel and resting the remaining slack near the battery. Let's take a moment to explain the harnesses included in your Road Glide kit. Now there are several wiring harnesses, so let's break them out. This is the front input cable used to connect the audio from our factory harness to the amplifier. This is the front output cable used to connect our speakers to the amplifier. Now there's some additional cables included. If you have a tour pack, use this to tap into the factory wiring and power the speakers. Finally, the rear radio harness is used to get the rear audio from the radio, connecting our amplifier to our bag lid speakers. We've also included two Y adapters. 
These go on the front and rear output channels of the amp. This allows you to add additional speakers to the amplifier in the future. In the amplifier installation kit, you'll notice multiple brackets. This is the main one for our amplifier mounting bracket. This one is for installing in bat wing fairings, and this one is for shark nose fairings. Now we're ready to prep our amplifier for installation. We use the heatsink and two brackets from our amp mounting kit. First, turn the heatsink over with the fins facing down and the Diamond R logo facing up. Take the smaller bracket with the flap facing out and secure it to the two holes labeled 9813 Road Glide using a two millimeter Allen and the provided flush mount screws. Next, take the larger bracket and secure it to the holes named 9813 on the other side. Finally, we'll flip the assembly over and secure our amplifier in place with four button head screws using a 2.5 millimeter Allen. Note the position of the Rockford Fallsgate logo in relation to the heatsink fins. Now we're ready to tune our amplifier. We offer an amp tuning guide that's available in the description of this video and through this kit's product details page at rockfordfosgate.com. There are three options for tuning the amplifier based on the radio that you're using. To get started, use the included Allen wrench to remove the smoke cover. Then use a small flathead to make the necessary amplifier adjustments. Now we're ready to install the amplifier. To get started, we'll use a half inch socket and remove two nuts on the left side of the fairing. We'll slide the amplifier assembly up and capture our marker light harness in the slot of the small bracket. Then we'll position the larger bracket over the two bolts and replace the half inch nuts to secure the assembly in place. Be sure to properly position your marker light harness in the groove before tightening the two bolts. Now we're ready to wire our amplifier. We'll take the front input cable, noting white is positive and black is negative, and connect the right side input to the right factory terminals and the harness labeled left side input to the left factory terminals. Once you're done, connect the Molex into the amplifier's front input. Next, connect both Y adapters to the front output and rear output harnesses. Then, connect the front output cable into one of the Y adapters on the amplifier's front output. Connect the cable labeled right side output to the right speaker, noting red is positive and black is negative. Then, finish by connecting the cable labeled left side output to the left speaker. Next, plug the power connector into the amplifier, noting the blue turn on wire is not used in this configuration. For the bag lids, attach the 35 pin rear radio harness into the rear of the source unit and connect the Molex into the amplifier's rear input. Finally, connect the rear bag lid harness to the Y adapter on the amplifier's rear output connector. All right, now we're ready to prepare our bag lids for speaker installation. To get started, we use a T25 Torx to remove the fabric hinge so we don't damage it during the cutting process. Next, we'll place a bin liner inside the bag to catch all the plastic shavings. Then use 3M masking tape to cover the top of the bag lid so we don't scratch the paint. Next, we'll position the template on top, making sure the front lip of the template is sitting firmly against the ridge of the bag lid. 
Then mark the two pilot holes on top. Remove the template and use a 1 8 inch bit to pre-drill the holes. Then secure the template in place using a number two Phillips and the small screws provided in the kit. Now that we have that done, we're ready to cut our saddlebag lids. We use a 5 16 inch bit to drill our pilot holes. Then using a reciprocating saw with a fine tooth blade, we'll start cutting. Being careful to follow along the template while staying within the guides. To maintain accuracy, do not cut the adjoining segments of the template until all the guides are done. This will avoid fitment issues, especially at the corners. All right, let's take a moment to do some cleanup. We'll start by examining our cutouts by using the file to make sure that there are no burrs around the edges. Test fit the grill to make sure it fits properly on the bag lid. Then remove the masking tape and bin liner containing the plastic shavings. Once you're completely done, repeat the process on the other saddlebag. Now that we have that done, we're ready to install our speakers. We'll open the bag lid and position the mounting ring and grill in place to make sure that they're properly aligned. The grill goes on the outside and our mounting ring on the inside, where we'll sandwich them to the bag lid. Using a number two Phillips, secure four of the smaller screws provided in the kit. Be careful not to over tighten these. Once that's done, we'll align the speaker and basket protector assembly with the speaker terminals facing toward the rear of the bike and secure it to the mounting ring from the inside using four button head screws with a built-in washer. Once you're done, repeat the process on the other side. Now we're ready to drill the holes for the wiring harness and the grommet. You'll need to remove the saddlebag and both service covers using the two quick releases. Then we'll measure approximately four and a half inches down from the front of the bag's quick release hole and three and a half inches from the side. This will ensure that the harness is kept away from any moving parts. Then we'll need a three quarter inch hole for installation of the wiring grommet. We'll start with the drill bit, then use a step up bit to increase the hole to the appropriate size. Once we're done, repeat the process on the other side. Now we're ready to run our harnesses to the saddlebags. The harness is labeled clutch side and brake side. On the brake side, we'll route our cable down the front side of the battery pocket and follow the existing electrical harnesses around the rear frame. On the clutch side, we'll use a half inch socket to slightly pull out the fuse panel and route our harness toward the rear bag area. Make sure you have enough length to insert the grommet into the bag without any excess slack. Once you're done, zip tie the harness along the frame and replace the service cover.
Okay, now we're ready to reinstall our saddlebags and finish wiring them. To get started, we'll position our bag in place and insert the grommet into the three quarter inch hole. Once you have the grommet seated, double check that the harness doesn't interfere with your dry belt or any moving parts. Then finish securing the bag in place. Locate the speaker harness pigtail and connect the red wire to the positive terminal, marked with the red dot, and the black to the negative terminal. Then plug the connector into the main harness. Use the included zip ties, zip tie mounts, and retainer clips to help keep wiring out of the way. We've also included some replacement warning stickers for installation inside your bags. Once you're done, repeat the process on the other side. All right, now that you made the required connections, you'll need to clean up the wiring. Now this is important on road glide fairings because the headlight configuration doesn't allow much room. Let's take a look at how we routed our harnesses. There are two hooks used for the fairing placement, so it's important to keep wiring away from them. You'll most likely need to realign the OEM harnesses and tuck them up as far as possible. Next, the amp outputs and power harnesses need to be routed behind the amp bracket. Noting our connections will reside up and above. To get audio to the right speaker, we carefully route our cables underneath the radio bracket to the other side. Then we'll use two zip ties on the bottom of the radio bracket to pull up all the harnesses in tight. All right, now we can start to reassemble and make some battery connections. We'll clean up our wiring, reinstall the center trough, install our gas tank, and make our battery connections. Now you're ready to test and tune the system. Refer to your tuning guide for testing procedures and make any adjustments as needed. Now that everything is working properly, let's finish reassembling our motorcycle and get it back out on the road. As you can see, that install was pretty straightforward. If you prefer a professional do the install for you, we have a network of authorized Rockford Fallsgate dealers that can be found on our website. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact our technical support. They can be reached Monday through Friday at 1-800-669-9899 or through live chat at the bottom of our website at rockfordfallsgate.com. Until next time, I'm Eric, and we'll see you again soon.